looking back at the history of Vietnam through the past century, there are many important figures that stand out through the conflict, constant conflict of this Indo-Chinese country. However, there's one person who stands out, especially in the eyes of the Vietnamese citizens who have him to thank for their freedom today from French and American rule. Born on May 19, 1890, in the village of Kim Lien in the Gaon, central Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh was the founder of the Viet Minh, a communist guerrilla force with the goal of the liberation of Vietnam from French colonial rule. He was able to maintain the loyalty and affection of his people by maintaining his strict nationalist ideology with the goal of liberation of Vietnam throughout a lifetime of struggle, violence, and constant discouragement from powers who consider themselves greater than him, specifically the U.S., France, and Japan. And by supporting and connecting with all of these people, both from urban and rural areas. This all began in 1911, when Ho Chi Minh traveled to Europe to complete his studies and explore ways in which he could use European strategies to rebel against the French colonial rule of Vietnam. Despite the fact that he wouldn't return to Vietnam until 1941, he constantly kept his initial goal in mind. After American President Woodrow Wilson announced his belief that every country has a right to be controlled by itself, Ho tried to meet with him at the Paris Peace Conference in 1919 to gain support for his Vietnamese cause, but was rejected. Despite this discouragement that was just the first of many, Ho continued the search for support from other entities. Between November and December 1922, he went to the 4th Comintern Congress in Moscow. After continuing talks with the Soviet Union, he became part of the Executive Committee of the Peasants International Congress in October 1923. Despite the enmity from the United States that Ho likely knew an alliance with the Soviet Union would gain him, he was still willing to accept it because it brought him closer to the goal of liberation. Two years subsequent to this election, he traveled to Canton, China, to advise an advisor to the Chinese nationalist. While there, he formed a group called Youth, made up of fellow Vietnamese nationalists, and set them up to become the Indochinese Communist Party, which was founded by him on February 3, 1930. Eleven years later, in 1941, Ho returned to Vietnam to create the Viet Minh, a group with the goal of establishing the Vietnam as a communist nation. Unfortunately, this did not last long. In 1942, he was captured by the Chinese Nationalist Forces, which had instigated purchase of the communist forces in China, and had begun to become worried by the communist forces in Vietnam. For 13 months, Ho suffered torture, horrible treatment, and was very sick. This was nearly the ultimate discouragement against the use of communism in the liberation of Vietnam, but Ho refused to give in. Upon his release, he was supported by the Dong Minh Hoi to return to Vietnam. He continues to use his communist ideas, as he explained in 1924, a letter to a friend. Make contact with the masses to awaken, organize, unite, and train them, and lead them to fight to the, for freedom and independence. He was further able to put together his force that created a communist state in post-World War II Vietnam after Japan's surrender and during the First Indochina War by, according to Russell H. K. Heng, having a large reputation as a nationalist hero, but basing his image on a simple, clean-living old man who loved children and showed great wisdom in everything he did. Furthermore, he refused to give up his goal and said to the French colonial rule, You can kill ten of our men, but for every one we kill of yours, but even though at those odds, you will lose, and we will win. In an interview with Stanley Carno for his article Ho Chi Minh in Time Magazine, General Vo Nguyen Yap of Ho's army stated that during the Vietnam War against the U.S., the Viet Minh would have fought for 20 years, maybe 100 years, as long as it took to win, regardless of cost. In essence, Ho Chi Minh served as a symbol for Vietnam's struggle, and thus was able to lead it successfully in its campaign against the French and the Americans.